Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, 20 of this uh, like missionary aerodynamics. We have, we are probably halfway through have had some uh, what is involved in uh, this and in of uh, different compressors. Picture onwards, we are now looking at and of course, subsequent the radial turbines. So, I think uh, in the last got some introductions are and uh, turbines and so on. So, in a little bit further, we will be talking about general analysis of axial turbines, what we had discuss remember during one of the lecture, sec second lecture or the third had uh, been uh, talking about and how one can analyze in a two dimensional sense a similar um, analysis class about we carried out for turbine in today to talk about uh, initially discuss uh, have turbines engine about impulse and reaction turbine types of axial turbines talk about fix um, how you can calculate work done and uh, how is it different turbines we will then discussion about we will assume that had used in the still be valid uh, highlight some simple different pressure cascade and the turbine nomenclature remains the same in the scamber or stack remains the same for only uh, spend lesser time and uh, take up cascade analysis which we in compressors but turbines have um, had this some discussion the different types of turbines of uh, compressor and centrifugal turbines as well just like in a compressor components in a compressor a rotor followed by in the case of turb a nozzle or precedes a rotor so guides and access and into a rotor work extraction takes place and uh, which is unlike rotor which comes first and then that goes into a state to the axial direction and so on both the rotor and the stator well you could have different acceleration in place in the rotor uh, and there are certain types of turb drop takes place only the rotor does not drop, it simply deflects the flow we will discuss that in little more later slides so basically accelerated in nozzle or and it then passes through a inner rotor the parts momentum to the rotor basically that converts our output now meant this process of multiple stages you would have number of stages which will jerk output which is on a compressor where is uh, which give you the required pressure typical axial compressor now um, this aspect in combat due to the motion of the rotor, have basically two distinct types of velocities component or type of velocity component or relative this was also discussed in and uh, so an analysis that we will do velocity triangle two distinct components which when we take up velocity triangle to what you had discussed understood velocity triangle sir it is pretty the case of a turbine as well the reason why it will make it simpler and uh, the constraint will now in uh, com is the fact that a compressor required to generate there is a work input which is what is used in pressure across the compressor it operates in a pressure gradient mode so always sees an increasing in the case of a turbine case it's it's the other way around variable pressure gradient because there is a turbine which lead turbine extracts work that is it converts kinetic energy which the flow output turbine the flow always sees a fair and that is one for between a turbine and because you have a favorable pressure the the scene in the case of com flow separation and bridge and all that does not really because a turbine uh, accelerating mode the problem of flow separation does performance of a turbine that we can more work per stage as compared to that and therefore a schematic of a uh, jet engine you will find compressors maybe 50 which are actually driven by edges of turbine so uh, can much greater than what we can achieve pressure rise we can achieve which is why as can edges of compressor so that is like that you need to understand the fundamental reason fact that turbines or compressors or pressure gradient so there are which will prevent from having very high stage that is not a limit and that is why you have a pressure drop taking place prior to that of you get from one stage so, um, pressures can be of different types, be either axial, in the case of turbine, in there are some literature which also type of compressors, centrifugal mixed. In the case of turbine, you could have or a radial turbine or combination of the two called axial turbine handle large mass flow, more efficient as very from compressors, 
low and are obviously more efficient. Axial turbo it has the same frontal area and also it is simple that we can use an axial bit of um, so and what is also efficiency of turbine higher than the basic reason I the comment I made operate in a favorable pressure and so the problem an adverse pressure gradient is not problems of flow separation also means that theoretically some turbines are easier is in coat and uncoat uh, in the sense that little more care design problem uh, because of turbine blade cooling problems that is an entirely different. So, aerodynamic pressure at a turbine that easier to design just because of the fact that really worry about the chances of flow across a turbine because flow in the case case and there is always a risk it enter into stall. So, um, let us now take a look at uh, types of turbine. Let us take a look at a turbine stage. It's, um, a schematic of an axial. So, an axial turbine mentioned a nozzle by a rotor representing a nozzle hot gases from the combustion chamber and then that part which is what gives us the rotor is mounted on what and from the rotor is exhaust stage or through the nozzle in the case of an aircraft. So, uh, usually we would be denote stator inlet as it is station 2 and rotor. In some of generation turbines disc was a separate entity mounted on slot disc and so the mechanism for mounting the disc. Some of the, it was very soon realized a uh, separate disc in obviously will increase count will increase term with modern day manufacturities in terms of 5 axis um, numerical machines computer guided machine for us to make little piece smaller sized engines now uh, some of the companies for example g a disc which is called ask blisk disc together a uh, piece of metal. similarly their competitors also like pratt and whitney calls it rotor or i there is no distinct for a blade because the blade and component stage being that you have the number of parts a typical turbine blade like 70 to 80 blade mounted on a disc so parts for one now if it's one component because all the disc that's a or in terms of maintenance but at the same time the is the fact that it which gets damaged in the earlier scenario you just have to do impossible to replace the then of course you will have to do a re and if the damage is severe has to be replaced pros and cons of having blade rotor uh, and of course uh, there are advantages but that for economically that's in the long an advantage that combination of the blade and the disc Having understood some of the fundamental turbines let us move on to important aspect of final analysis triangles i think discussing velocity triangle so i will understood the fundamentals of velocity to kind of move velocity triangles just like that are done it step by step exactly the same pressure but of course the differences which you need to understand now velocity triangle analysis and this is elementary uh, just like now our analysis is to carry out blade height and we speed at that height um, u component of velocity we will denote relative component we will denote by and uh, the axial velocity that is obviously denoted by stressors tangential subscript w absolute component of tangential velocity is the relative componential direction regarding angles angle between the absolute velocity direction and bending angle for relative these are the terminologies used even in follow exactly the same nomenclature of turbine as well a velocity triangle turbine stage as we have already oh well a stator is usually referred to as a nine because the flow is in a stator of a turbine and then you have a road uh, a stator or a nozzle now inlet to station 1 exit is no exit of the rotor is station three. say there is an inlet velocity which, which is the absolute velocity alpha 1 it is nozzle highly rated um, flow which is c 2 u is much higher than c 1 then why this is called now I also have um, please note that the vector u is surface to the suction surface was the other way around drives the bl the blade speed which is the absolute velocity entering the and uh, will be our uh, vector difference v2 angle which c2 beta 2 is the angle makes with the axial direction just like we have seen in enters the rotor tangential to the camber leading edge this this is obviously when the to 0 separate we have v3 is um, less than and uh, on the type of uh, turbine whether it is impulse or and you also have c3 
and u. Beta 3 is the angle cell direction, alpha the absolute velocity c. Go back to the lecture 2 or 3 about velocity triangles for pressure. You can similarities and uh, strongly urge both these velocity triangles by keeping them. So, you can understand the differences and the turbine. So, try to figure these um, two components. It is very necessary that you understand the differences as well as the similar the fundamental aspect that is the standard uh, velocity triangle in stage. I have not really what kind of a turbine it is with action. We will come to that soon and different uh, ways in express the velocity triangle these types of. Um, so, let us now take a look at the different types mentioned in the beginning that there are configurations of accessible the impulse and the re the entire pressure the nozzle deflect the flow and would have. So, there is no uh, pressure drop taking place in the turbine. So, the, the rotor blades would simply deflect it to the next uh, one present. Reaction turbine on the other hand the rotor as well as the and the amount of pressure is defined by we will discuss in detail in the now which means that reaction of an impulse because the entire pressure drop in the stator to any pressure drop and the reaction for an impulse turbine these are two different config turbines which are possible what we will do is that the triangles also stand uh, mechanism by which mine now um, apply for an act what you will notice is that the turbine is a three parameters one is of course the other parameters are and the tangent absolute velocity, angular momentum and exit of the rotor, the power generated by the turbine rate multiplied by u 2, which is and the tangential at the inlet of the rotor times C w 3, which at rotor exit by the uh, component of the. Now, we would not this uh, does not uh, at a given radial plane, we assume to be equal to u 3 or the work done now be equal to it is u multiplied by c w or which is also equal to from the thermodynamic there is a stagnation temperature drop taking turbine expands the flow is extracted from the turbine stagnation temperature drop fine. Therefore, between the inlet and egg would basically be by uh, uh, this particular turbine as is also equal to 1 minus t 0 3 where, where this is basically the enthalpy difference C p t 0 1 is enthalpy at inlet of the turbine, C p t 0 3 is the enthalpy at the exit of the turbine. Let us now denote delta t 0, which basically refers to the stagnation temperature. The net change in stagnation temperature in the um, turbine delta t naught is equal to t 0 1 minus t 0 3, which is also equal to t 0 2 minus t 0 3, because 1 to 2 is the stator and there cannot be any change in stagnation temperature in the stator. Therefore, T 0 1 minus T 0 3 is equal to T 0 2 minus T 0 3. So, we now define what is known as the stage work ratio, which is basically delta T naught by T 0 1 and that is equal to u times C w 2 minus C w 3 divided by C p times T 0 1. So, this basically follows from these two equations here, which correspond to the work done per unit mass, one is in terms of the velocities and the other is in terms of stagnation temperatures. So, a similar analysis was also carried out when we were discussing about axial compressors and uh, where also we had kind of equated the work uh, that the flow does on well uh, work done by the compressor on the flow as compared to the stagnation uh, temperature rise taking place in a compressor as a result of the work done um, on the flow. So, with there also we had defined the pressure rise or pressure ratio per stage in terms of the temperature rise across that particular stage and the velocity components which come from the velocity triangles. Now, uh, what you can see here is that the turbine work per stage would basically be limited by two parameters one is the pressure ratio that is available for expansion and of course, uh, the other aspect is the allowable the amount of blade stress and turning that is physically be possible for one to achieve in, in the case of a, a particular turbine. So, there are two parameters one being the available pressure ratio and the other is the allowable blade stress and turning that one can achieve 
in a particular turbine configuration. So, in unlike in a compressor where uh, we also had the issue of boundary layer behavior, because the flow was always operating in an adverse pressure gradient mode in compressors. In a turbine, the pressure gradient is favorable. So, boundary layer uh, behavior is generally uh, something that can be controlled and there are normally not much issues related to boundary layer, <coughs> boundary layer separation or uh, uh, growth of boundary layer and so on. Of course, there are certain uh, operating conditions and which, uh, under which certain um, the stages of turbines may undergo local flow separation, but that is um, only for short durations. In general, um, in a favorable pressure gradient, boundary layers generally tend to be well behaved. Now, uh, the turbine work ratio that we had uh, seen in the previous slide is also often defined in uh, as a ratio between the work done per unit mass divided by the square of the blade speed. Therefore, W t by u square, which is also equal to the enthalpy rise or rather enthalpy drop in the case of turbine divided by u square, which is basically equal to delta C w divided by u or net change in the tangential velocity absolute divided by the blade speed. Now, this is an important parameter because based on this we can uh, understand uh, the differences between an impulse turbine and a reaction turbine, which is what we are going to do next. To take a look at uh, what are the fundamental differences besides of course, the fact that in an impulse turbine flow is um, the entire pressure drop takes place only in the nozzle and in a reaction turbine that is shared between the uh, nozzle and the rotor. Let us take up an impulse turbine first and we will take a look at the velocity triangles for an impulse turbine and then try to find out the work ratio uh, per stage of an impulse turbine and related to some parameters uh, which we can get from the velocity triangles. So, here uh, we have a typical impulse turbine stage, um, a set of a row of uh, nozzle blades followed by a row of rotor blades. And, uh, so, flow is accelerated in the nozzle and so, uh, the velocity that reaches the rotor, the absolute component is C 2 and uh, at an angle of alpha 2 with the axial direction and as a result of the blade speed u, the relative velocity which enters the rotor is V 2, which is at an angle of beta 2 with the axial direction. And in an impulse turbine, I mentioned that the rotor simply deflects the flow and there is no pressure drop um, taking place in the rotor and therefore, at the exit of the rotor we have V 3, which is at an angle of beta 3 and by virtue of the symmetry of the blades, we will have beta 2 is equal to minus beta 3 and velocity in magnitude V 2 would be equal to V 3. So, which we can also see from the velocity triangle shown here, C 2 is the absolute velocity entering the rotor v 2 is the relative velocity and the corresponding angles here alpha 2 and, and beta 2. Now, in the rotor we have uh, v 3, which is equal to v 2 in magnitude, but at an angle which is different from the inlet that is beta 3 will be negative of beta 2 in the other direction. Absolute velocity leaving the blade is c 3. Now, if you look at uh, the other components of velocities, like this is the axial component of the absolute velocity C a and uh, the corresponding uh, tangential components of the relative velocity, which are obviously equal and opposite in direction like V w 2 and V w 3. You can see that these are equal in magnitude, but of course, the, the directions are opposite because V 2 and V 3 are in opposite directions and C w 2 is the absolute component of the, well, tangential component of the absolute velocity at inlet C w 3 um, that at the exit of the rotor. So, this is a typical uh, velocity triangle of, of an impulse turbine uh, stage and uh, if you if you take a closer look at the uh, velocity triangles, I had mentioned that the angles beta 3 and beta 2 are equal in magnitude, but they are um, 
different by the their orientation. So, beta 3 is equal to minus beta 2, which means that we have V w 3 is equal to minus V w 2. And the difference in the tangential component of the absolute velocity C w 2 minus C w 3 will be equal to twice of V w 2. So, let us take a look at the velocity triangle again. C w 2 is this minus C w 3 is equal to the sum of V w 2 and V w 3 and since they are equal we have that is equal to twice of V w 2 which is also equal to 2 into C w 2 minus u or this is equal to 2 u into C a by u tan alpha 2 minus 1. So, that is again coming from the velocity triangles you can see that C a tan alpha 2 is this component minus u is equal to twice of this. So, the difference between the um, tangential component of the absolute velocity C w 2 and C w 3 that is delta C w for an impulse turbine will be equal to 2 u into C a by u tan alpha 2 minus 1. Therefore, the work ratio that we have defined earlier for an impulse turbine that is delta h naught by u square is equal to 2 u into C a by u tan alpha 2 minus 1. We will now take a look at what happens in the case of, an, of a reaction turbine and calculate the work ratio um, as applicable for a reaction turbine and see the, is there a difference fundamentally in the work ratio of um, an impulse turbine and a reaction turbine. Now, let us take a look at a, a typical 50 percent reaction turbine just for simplicity. The reason why we took up a 50 percent reaction turbine is because in a 50 percent reaction turbine the pressure drop is shared equally between the nozzle and the rotor and therefore, the velocity triangles as you can see are mirror images of one another. The velocity triangle at the inlet of the rotor is this where C this is C 2 the absolute velocity coming in from the rotor uh, from the nozzle, V 2 is the relative velocity and this is the blade speed. And since they are mirror images at the exit of the rotor you have V 3 and C 3 and therefore, you can clearly see that C 2 will be equal to V 3 and V 2 will be equal to C 3 corresponding the angles alpha 2 will be equal to beta 3 and beta 2 will be equal to alpha 3. So, this is true only for a 50 percent reaction turbine. For any other reaction uh, stages of course, the velocity triangles need not necessarily be symmetrical and this is also assuming that the axial velocity is uh, does not change across the rotor and uh, the nozzle. Now, for this kind of a reaction turbine which is uh, having a degree of reaction of 0 0.5, since the velocity triangles are mirror images or symmetrical, if you assume constant axial velocity, we have C w 3 is equal to minus C a tan alpha 2 minus u and therefore, the turbine work ratio would basically be equal to twice into twice of C a by u tan alpha 2 minus 1. This you can compare with that of um, the um, impulse turbine, where it was 2 u multiplied by C a by u tan alpha 2 minus 1. So, you can immediately see that there is a uh, fundamental difference between the work ratio as compared to a turbine, which is impulse or in this case of course, the example was for a 50 percent reaction turbine. Uh, so, there is a fundamental difference between the work ratio as applicable for an impulse turbine as compared to that of a, a 50 percent reaction turbine and in general in a, for any reaction turbine as well. Now, um, this was as far as the different types of uh, turbine configurations were concerned and how one can analyze uh, these turbine configurations and what are the fundamental differences between uh, let us say an impulse turbine and a reaction turbine and how one can from the velocity triangle estimate the work ratio that um, or the work done by these kind of turbine stages. So, um, what I was suggesting right at the beginning was that you can clearly um, see differences between the compressors and turbines by looking at the velocity triangle for these two different cases and comparing them uh, to understand the fundamental uh, working of compressors uh, 
and turbines and what makes them uh, two different components. What we can uh, take up next for discussion is um, something we have discussed in detail for compressors as well that is to do with a cascade and um, as you have already seen a cascade is um, a simplified version of uh, a rotating machine and you could have different versions of cascade you could have a linear cascade or an annular cascade and basically a cascade would have a set of blades which are arranged set of uh, similar blades which are all arranged in a certain fashion at a certain angle uh, which we have referred to as the stagger angle and cascade analysis forms a very fundamental analysis um, of design of uh, turbo machines whether it is compressors or turbines. So, cascade basically consists of an array of stationary blades and uh, constructed basically for measurement of performance parameters and uh, what is usually done is that we would like to eliminate any three dimensional effects which are likely to come up in a cascade and uh, one of the sources of three dimensionality is the presence of boundary layer. So, one would like to remove boundary layer from the end walls of a cascade and so that is a standard practice that one would have porous end walls through which boundary layer flow fluid can be removed to ensure two dimensionality um, of the flow entering into a cascade. Now, it is also a standard assumption that radial variations in velocity field can be kind of eliminated or ignored and uh, cascade analysis is primarily meant to give us some idea about the um, amount of blade loading that a particular configuration can give us as well as the losses in total pressure that one can uh, measure from a cascade analysis. So, and in turbine cascades testing also involves wind tunnels which are very similar to what we had discussed for compressors. I had shown you um, cascade wind tunnels when we were discussing about uh, cascades in the context of compressors. In um, turbine cascades are al also tested in similar wind tunnels and uh, just that in a case of turbines since they are operating in an accelerating flow, there, there is a requirement of a certain pressure drop across a, a, a turbine. So, therefore, um, the wind tunnel is required to gener generate sufficient pressure which can be expanded through a, a turbine cascade. Now, turbine blades as you are probably aware would are likely to have much higher camber than com compressor cascades or compressor blades and turbine cascades are set at a negative stagger unlike in compressor blades. Something I will explain when we take up a cascade uh, uh, a schematic in, in, in detail. Now, cascade analysis will uh, basically give us as I mentioned two parameters besides a set of other parameters like uh, boundary layer thickness and, and, and losses etcetera. Um, the most fundamental parameter we would like to look at from the cascade analysis is this surface static pressure distribution or C p distribution which is uh, related to the loading of the blade and the second aspect of this is the total pressure loss across the cascade which is uh, yet another parameter that one would like to uh, infer from the cascade analysis. Now, let us take a look at a typical cascade uh, turbine cascade um, nomenclature. I think I mentioned at the beginning that all the terms that we have um, used for compressors will it is the same nomenclature that we apply for a turbine as well just that the way the blades are set or the blade geometry they are quite different uh, between compressors and turbines. So, if you look at uh, a typical compressor cascade these are the blades you can immediately see that these blades have much higher turning or camber than compressor blades. So, it, it is a set of these blades which are arranged uh, either linearly or in an annular fashion which constitute a cascade. So, these blades are um, set apart by a certain distance which is as you can see denoted by pitch or spacing and these blades are set at a certain angle which is called the blade setting or the stagger angle. So, you can see this 
uh, lambda which you see here refers to the blade setting or stagger angle. The blades have a certain camber which is basically the angle subtended between the tangent to the camber line at the leading edge and that at the tail trailing edge. So, the difference between that gives us the uh, blade camber. Now, the flow enters the cascade at a certain angle you can see that the inlet blade angle is given here as beta 1 and the blade outlet angle is beta 2. Now, so um, if there is a difference between the blade angle and the flow angle at the inlet that is basically the incidence which is denoted by I here. So, this is the incidence uh, angle. Similarly, a difference between the blade outlet angle and the outflow angle is the deviation which is denoted by delta. So, at the exit you may have a flow deviation at the inlet one may have an incidence. And uh, if you draw a normal or at, uh, normal to the tangent at the trailing edge and uh, take it to the next adjacent blade, the suction surface of the adjacent blade. So, this distance that you see here is basically referred to as the throat or opening at the um, turbine exit and that is here denoted by a symbol O. The blade cord as uh, you already know is denoted by C and then uh, the blades also would have a certain finite thickness at the trailing edge. So, that is denoted here by the trailing edge thickness. So, the blades uh, practically will have a certain amount of finite thickness and that is what is denoted here as the thickness at the trailing edge. So, these are the fundamental uh, nomenclatures, uh, nomenclature that is used in uh, turbine. A very similar aspect was also used in compressor where we had defined all these different parameters like incidence and deflection, deviation and uh, blade angle, the camber, pitch, stagger all of them were defined. The difference is of course, the, blade, the way the blades are set. This is set at a negative stagger as you can see the compressor cascade if you go back you will see that the way the blades are set is uh, opposite to what you see in the case of a turbine. That is basically to ensure that the flow passage gives you the required amount of flow turning and also the flow acceleration in the case of turbine cascades and in, in compressor cascade the setting is to ensure that you get a deceleration in a compressor. So, um, having understood the fundamental nomenclature of a turbine cascade we would now take a, a closer look at the different um, aspects of flow through a cascade and I would be deriving uh, well not really a detailed derivation, but I would just give you some idea about how one can calculate the lift um, developed by uh, a certain cascade turbine cascade in two different cases. One is if we do not assume any uh, losses or if it is an inviscid analysis and followed by a, a viscous analysis. Um, one of course, would also get a drag in the case of a viscous analysis, how one can calculate the lift and uh, of course, that is basically related to the loading of the blades eventually. So, um, the basic idea of cascade analysis is uh, that just like in the case of an airfoil, because cascade is uh, in some sense an airfoil analysis, we can determine the lift and drag forces acting on the blades. And this analysis as I mentioned can be carried out using both these assumptions a potential flow or inviscid analysis or by con considering viscous effects in a rather simplistic manner. So, we will assume that the mean velocity which we are going to denote as V subscript m makes an angle of alpha subscript m with the axial direction. What we will do is to determine the circulation developed on the blades and subsequently the lift force. In the inviscid analysis, obviously there is no drag, and there is only a lift force, which, which a lift is the only force acting on the blade in the case of an inviscid analysis. When you take up a viscous analysis, there are two components of the force and a resultant force, the lift and the drag. So this is the um, geometry we are considering for an inviscid uh, flow through a turbine cascade. If you take a look at 
two different streamlines, let us say this is one streamline, another streamline, which is bounding uh, one particular blade that is shown here. These are the two different streamlines. What we are going to do is to find the circulation produced over this particular airfoil, which is currently an airfoil here, and then relate that to the lift uh, developed on this particular blade. So, the inlet flow the entering the cascade is V 1 and the flow exiting the blade is V 2 and of course, we will assume uh, a mean velocity of V m which makes an angle alpha m with the axial direction. So, if this is the case and this is how you can uh, take a look at the circulation axis. So, this is the axis along which we are calculating the circulation and therefore, this is the lift acting on this particular blade. Since it is a turbine blade you know that this is basically the direction in which the lift is going to act. So, the mean velocity that is shown here by vector V m acts in this direction, this is the inflow velocity V 1 and this is the exit velocity V 2. So, circulation that is denoted by capital lambda here is equal to s multiplied by the difference in the uh, tangential velocities V w 2 minus V w 1 and lift is related to the circulation which is the product of density times the mean velocity and the circulation. Therefore, lift acting when there are no other uh, effects considered like viscous effects, then the lift acting here would be simply the product of rho times V m into the circulation which is s into V w 2 minus V w 1. So, this is expressed in a non dimensional form which we refer to as the lift coefficient. So, C L here is lift divided by half rho V m square into C and this is equal to rho into V m into s V w 2 minus V w 1 by half rho V m square into C. So, this can be related to the angles the across the um, cascade and so we can simplify this lift coefficient as 2 into s by c into tan alpha 2 minus tan alpha 1 multiplied by cos alpha alpha m so this is the um, this is basically the lift coefficient on a turbine blade assuming that the flow is inviscid now, what happens if there are viscous effects? The primary effect of viscous um, flow on uh, the flow through a turbine cascade is the fact that viscous effects will manifest themselves in the form of pressure losses, total pressure losses and therefore, the wake from the blade trailing edge will lead to a non-uniform velocity leaving the blades. In the previous analysis, we were assuming uniform velocity entering the blades and uniform velocity leaving the blades because it is a potential flow. So, here in the case of viscous analysis in addition to lift one would also have a drag which will also contribute to lift in some way or the other. So, a con, um, the effective force acting on the blade will be a resultant of both the lift as well as the drag acting on the blade. So, we now define what is known as a total pressure loss coefficient, we had defined a similar parameter for compressors as well. So, this is denoted by omega bar because there is a total pressure loss taking place across the blades as a result of the viscous effects. So, omega bar is equal to P 0 1 minus P 0 2 divided by half rho V 2 square. So, this is the loss in total pressure across the turbine cascade. So, the schematic I had shown earlier now gets modified because you have a, a set of uniform uh, streamlines entering the turbine cascade but as they leave the cascade you can see that they have become non uniform basically at the trailing edge where there is a wake. So, this what is shown here schematically is the these are the different wakes of all these blades that are present here. So, there is a difference in um, the forces acting on the blade as a result of this non uniformity in the velocity at the uh, at the exit of the turbine cascade. So, in this case we can calculate drag as equal to the losses, we can relate the drag to the losses total pressure losses omega bar into s into cos alpha m and therefore, the effective lift will now be equal to the sum of the lift as well as the component of drag in that effective direction that is omega bar into s into cos alpha m.
and lift we know is the product of density and the mean velocity and the circulation. So, that is rho v m into delta plus omega bar s cos alpha 1 alpha m. Therefore, the lift coefficient in this case will get modified as twice into s by c tan alpha 2 minus tan alpha 1 cos alpha m plus the drag component c d times tan alpha m. So, this is uh, the manner in which we can calculate lift coefficient for both these cases. One is for the case without viscous effects and the second is if we consider viscous effects. So, the basic idea of calculating these coefficients was to calculate also calculate the blade efficiency. So, based on the calculation of the lift and drag coefficients, we can now calculate the blade efficiency, which is basically the ratio of ideal static pressure drop to obtain a certain degree of kinetic change energy change to the actual static pressure drop, which will produce the same change in kinetic energy. Therefore, the blade efficiency is um, in I have of course, skipped the derivation of the blade efficiency, but it can be related to the lift and drag coefficients like blade efficiency is 1 minus C d by C l tan alpha m divided by 1 plus C d by C l cot alpha m. And if you were to neglect the drag term in the lift definition, because C d um, the drag term is usually much smaller in comparison to the lift, the blade efficiency is simply 1 by 1 plus 2 into C d divided by C l sin into twice alpha m. So, uh, this the basic idea of uh, calculating the lift and drag coefficients was also to calculate the blade efficiency, which is uh, basically a function of C d C l and the mean angle alpha m. Okay, so, let me now quickly recap uh, our discussion in today's class. We had taken up three distinct topics for discussion. One was the different types of turbine configurations, axial turbine configurations, the impulse and the reaction turbine stages and we have done, um, we have had a look at the velocity triangles and how you can calculate the work ratio for impulse and reaction turbine stages. We have also carried out the work and stage dynamics, we have looked at these different components or co configurations of axial turbines and how we can uh, go about uh, determining the work ratio for these um, two configurations of axial turbine. And then uh, we had some discussion on turbine cascades and calculation of lift and drag uh, for a typical turbine configuration and how we can use that information to calculate the a blade efficiency from simple um, turbine cascade testing. That is a simple cascade testing can actually give us um, some idea about the blade efficiency that this kind of a blade configuration can give us. So, that brings us to the end of this lecture. We will continue our discussion on axial turbines in the next lecture as well, where we will primarily be talking about uh, the performance parameters, degree of reaction losses as well as efficiency of axial turbines and um, where we will also take up detailed discussion on what are the different losses in a two dimensional sense and how we can define efficiency and uh, you will see that there are different ways of defining efficiency for a turbine. So, we will take up some of these topics for discussion in the next class.